objective of uh, any engine is to increase the power output. Once when the power output is increased, the efficiency also it increases automatically. And these two parameters can be achieved only by the following three ways. By increasing the engine speed, the power output of the engine can be increased. By increasing the compression ratio, the power output of the engine can be increased. By increasing the air density at the inlet of the engine, by this way also, the power output of the engine increases. And let us see out of these three, which will give better output and better performance with minimum limitations. The first method is as the engine speed increases, as the speed of the engine increases, the inertial load on the engine increases. Once when the inertial load on the engine increases, the engine requires a rigid and robust engine and the size of the engine also will be more and it becomes heavy and the balancing of this engine inertial forces will be very difficult. At not only the robust engine design is required, at higher speeds, the, there is a difference in volumetric efficiency. Once when the volumetric efficiency decreases, the friction on the engine increases. With this increased friction, there is a load which is on the bearing, it also increases. Once on the, when the load on the bearing increases, what happens, you know, the volumetric efficiency decreases and the combustion efficiency decreases and the fuel efficiency decreases and the power output decreases. And this method, increasing the engine speed, to increase the power uh, power output can be overruled because two parameters. One is the limitation of the robust design of engine is required. And another, another one is uh, the higher octane numbers are used as far as the petrol engines are concerned with better antenna characteristics, which will be a costlier affair. And this method, even though it is good in the theoretical sense, in practical sense, it, this method cannot be chosen. And let us discuss about the second method. The power output of the engine can also be increased by increasing the compression ratio. Once when the compression ratio increases, what is going to happen, you know? The highest pressure in the engine. What is the highest pressure in the engine? The pressure which is obtained at the end of compression, this also increases. And once when the pressure at the end of the compression increases, what is going to happen? Automatically temperature also increases. There will be more thermal load on the engines and it leads to the pre-ignition. In turn, the pre-ignition leads to engine knock or detonation this method, it is also not advisable as far as the increasing power output and efficiency of the engine are concerned. And another method is there, the third method, what we are going to discuss. Here also, this method generally we call it is supercharging. Okay, by supercharging, the engine power output can be increased and efficiency can also be increased. And this method is adapted everywhere, even though there is no much difference between the previous method and this method. In the previous method, what we have seen is increasing the compression ratio, which means the highest <coughs> pressure in the engine. What is the highest pressure in the engine? The pressure which is obtained at the end of the compression, which leads to increasing temperature, this leads to pre-ignition, which in turn leads to untowards uh, uh, instance like engine knock or detonation. But in supercharging also, we are going to increase the pressure. But here, only we are increasing the pressure of the air or the air-fuel mixture. But the temperature we are not increasing. What, why we are not increasing? Here, a system will be there, compressor which compresses the air. This compressed air, it is passed through the intercooler. This intercooler is placed between the compressor and the intake 
wall. Okay, so this intercooler cools the air at higher pressure. The temperature will be less, the pressure will be more. This method, it what this method says, this in this supercharging method, we are increasing the inlet air density. This is called supercharging. This, this increases. This increases the power output of the engine. The supercharging is achieved by supplying air. The supercharging is achieved by supplying air. If it is diesel engine, air fuel mixture, if it is petrol engine, the supercharging is achieved by supplying air or air fuel mixture at a pressure higher than the pressure at which engine naturally aspirates air, okay? Naturally, normal engines will work under atmospheric pressure. The air is inducted into the engine cylinder approximately at atmospheric pressure or slightly above the atmospheric pressure. But in supercharging, what we are doing is we are supplying the air. If it is a petrol engine, we are, if it is a diesel engine, you are supplying air fuel mixture if it is a petrol engine to the engine cylinder at a higher pressure, at a higher pressure than the pressure at which the engine naturally aspirates air. This increases the air density. Increase in air density increases the mass of air or air fuel mixture inducted into the engine cylinder for the same swept volume and thereby increases the power output of the engine. A device called supercharger is used to increase the pressure of air. Supercharger is nothing but an air compressor. An air compressor, generally this air compressor is uh, driven from the engine itself. Okay, now the supercharging, it is defined as the supply of air, as the supply of air if it is diesel engine or air fuel mixture if it is petrol engine supercharging we are going to define it is the supply of air or air fuel mixture at a <laughs> pressure higher than the pressure at which engine naturally aspirates air this increases air density and once when the air density of the air which is inducted into the cylinder if it is increased thereby what is going to happen mass of the air or air fuel mixture inducted for the same swept volume and thereby this increases power output of the engine. A device called supercharger or supercharger I said it is nothing but a compressor it is used to increase the pressure of air. Forced induction, forced induction again it is nothing but the supercharging only. Forced induction in this what we are going to do is it is a process of delivering the compressed air to the intake of the internal combustion engine. A forced induction engine uses a compressor to increase the pressure, temperature, and intensity of the air. See, please concentrate. An engine without forced induction is considered naturally aspirated engine. Supercharger. What is, what is supercharger? A supercharger is an air compressor. I was telling supercharger is nothing but an air compressor which increases the pressure or density of air supplied to the IC engine. A supercharger is an air compressor that increases the pressure or density of air supplied to an IC engine. This gives each intake cycle of the engine more oxygen for the same swept volume. If more oxygen is supplied to the engine cylinder for the same swept volume, letting it allows to burn more fuel. It allows to burn more fuel during the same swept volume. And once when the more amount of fuel is burnt, the fuel efficiency, efficiency is good. And once when the fuel efficiency is good, it does more work, more amount of heat is developed, 
more amount of combustion energy developed. Development of generation of more combustion energy increases the amount of work done by the cylinder. And by this, the engine power also increases. Supercharger, again I will repeat, it is an air compressor which increases the pressure or density of air supplied to an IC engine. This gives each intake cycle more amount of oxygen which leads to burning more fuel, more combustion heat energy, more amount of work done. So in turn, the power generated by the engine also increases. See, another very important point here we should consider power for the compressor, power for the supercharger can be provided mechanically by means of a belt drive or chain drive which is connected to the crankshaft. The power required by the compressor, it is driven from the engine crankshaft only. Some portion, some percentage of the power developed by the engine is used to drive the supercharger. It used to drive the supercharger. Okay, another method is also there. The compressor can be driven by turbine also. When the power is provided by a turbine, provided by the exhaust gas, the supercharger, this mode is called turbo supercharger or it is called turbocharger also. In this turbocharging, the energy required to uh, operate the turbine, not from the engine, the exhaust, which is supposed to be exhausted to the atmosphere, before it is exhausted to the atmosphere, it is passed to the turbine. In turn, turbine will develop power. This power is used to drive the supercharger. This method is called turbocharger or super turbocharger. Any of, in detail about this, we are going to discuss in the coming. What are the general uh, motor of the supercharger? Superchargers are the compressors which are driven from the engine cylinder. Superchargers, it is an external component of the engine. It is not integral part of the engine. It is an external component. And this supercharger, again I am repeating, supercharger is nothing but a compressor. Okay, so the mechanism used to drive the compressor is again the power, some percentage of the power generated from the engine, it is taken, okay. The basic effect of this supercharger is to increase the force on the incoming air to the engine. To, what, is the, what do you mean by to increase the force on the incoming air to the engine? To increase the air density. If we increase the air density, the amount of the mass of air inducted into engine cylinder is increased for the same swept volume what it was done for normal aspirated engines. Okay, how the density of air can be increased by increasing its pressure. How the pressure can be increased with the help of a compressor. Okay, the basic effect of the supercharger is it it increases the force on the incoming air to the engine. Superchargers are well driven. They do create small amounts of drag because the pulleys are used and gears are used. However, this drag effect is overweight by the, uh, whatever the benefit we are getting from supercharger. What is the main benefit we are getting from supercharger? Which increases in turn ultimately the power developed by the engine. If less pressure boost is required, if less pressure is required, then a larger pulleys can be used. If greater boost is required, smaller pulleys are used. This is all about for driving the compressor. And certain important points during supercharging should be noted. The main uh, purpose of the supercharging is it increases the power output of the engine. The, before that I started at the initial state, the manufacturer's mo main motto of any engine design will be 
to increase the power output from for the same given swept volume supercharging results in higher forces how higher forces are required because pressure is increased once pressure increases the air density increases once when the air density increases the amount of mass supplied to the engine cylinder increases okay and as far as the higher forces are developed the engine should be designed in such a way that it should withstand the higher forces which are developed due to the compressor action okay the power required for air compression the power required for air compression has to be taken from the engine itself we are not giving any outside power to the compressor the power required the compressor compressor is a work absorbing system some external energy has to be supplied to operate the compressor what is the compressor the objective of compressor is it increases the pressure of the fluid which is passed through it okay the power required for air compression has to be taken from engine itself but the net power output will be more than the power output without supercharging the same capacity you may you may ask one question sir you are telling the compressor is driven by the driven by the engine itself some percentage of the power the crankshaft it is used to drive the compressor that means the power is reduced you may ask question no gentlemen but ultimately at the end the net power output will be more than the power output without supercharging for the same capacity the higher pressure high temperature may lead to detonation therefore fuel with better anti knock characteristics are required see i what i was telling supercharging also increases the pressure at the end of the compression the maximum pressure also increases once when the maximum pressure increases the temperature also increases once when the temperature increases there is a probability of pre ignition once when the pre ignition takes place definitely it leads to engine knock or detonation it could this could be prevented or minimized by using the fuel with better anti knock characteristics to prevent the detonation again i am repeating to prevent the engine knock or detonation we should prefer the fuel with better anti knock characteristics okay the main the, these are the important points to be noted during supercharging what supercharging supercharging increases the power output okay supercharging results in higher forces how it, whatever the engine which is designed it has to withstand these higher forces the power required for air compression it is taken from the engine itself okay even though some percentage of the power taken from the engine but the net power output will be far far more than power output without supercharging for the same capacity the higher pressure and temperature may lead to detonation okay higher pressure at the, at the end of the engine cylinder the pressure will be more because of this high density air inducted into the engine cylinder once when the pressure, maximum pressure increases temperature of the cylinder increases there is a probability of pre ignition in turn pre ignition leads to detonation or engine knock this could be prevented or minimized by using the fuel with better anti knock characteristics with better anti knock characteristics what are the objective of super so far we have seen we have seen the in manufacturer motto his motto is to increase the power output to increase the engine efficiency there are three techniques out of the what are the three techniques by increasing the engine speed the power can be increased by increasing the compression ratio power can be increased by increasing the air density the power can be increased the first two methods
can be overruled due to their more disadvantages and the third matter increasing the female air density it is an advantage compared to those two that method is called supercharging we have seen the purpose of supercharging now what are the main object of supercharging supercharging is done to induct more amount of air into the cylinder for the same swept volume so that the fuel efficiency will be increased and volume efficiency will be increased combustion efficiency will be increased the combustion heat energy generated will increase in turn there is a perfect or better expansion to develop more power this is the main objective of the supercharging apart from this for a given weight and bulk of engine supercharging increases the power output here for supercharging we are not designing any specific engine or any specific materials whatever the existing engine is there for the same engine we are supercharged okay this is important in aircraft marine or automotive engines why this is important because their inertial forces will play important role and the inertial forces are as far as minimum balancing will be easier volumetric efficiency will increase more space will be provided better volumetric efficiency more combustion efficiency more comb fuel efficiency in turn increases the power output okay and another object of the supercharging is used to obtain better performance from the engine again i am repeating i just now i was telling we are not designing any specific or a particular engine for supercharging the existing engine whatever the engine which is available it is used for super charge to compensate for the power loss due to high altitudes particularly in aircraft engines all the aircraft engines whatever it take whatever the applications we come across the aircraft engines and heavy duty automotive engines whereby we are using the supercharging engines or turbo charged engines then we see what are the advantages of supercharging engines after this advantages and disadvantages we are going to see what are the different methods of supercharging first what are the advantages we are going to have by supercharging the power output of the engine can be increased how the power output will be increased see we are increasing the air density which is inducted into the engine cylinder once when the air density is increased what happens the mass of air which is inducted into the engine cylinder increases for the same swept volume so which increases the volumetric efficiency which increases the combustion efficiency whereby the power output can be increased see more quantity of charge can be inducted into the engine cylinder by increasing the supercharging by increasing the density of air which is inducted into the engine cylinder more quantity of charge can be inducted see here two engines are there if it is a petrol engine more quantity of air and fuel is inducted into the engine cylinder if it is a diesel engine more amount of air is inducted into the engine cylinder and better atomization of fuel is possible whether it is a petrol engine or diesel engine better atomization of fuel is possible okay how so if it is a petrol engine the high pressure air is inducted into the what is this carburetor whereby faster mixing with petrol is possible and if it is a diesel engine at the end of compression the pressure and temperatures are much higher whatever the diesel which is inducted at the end of compression there will be faster mixing between atomized diesel particles and the air which is already available in the with the supercharging better atomization of fuel is if better atomization of fuel is possible definitely the combustion is expected to be better 
more amount of fuel is burned at minimum time. Better mixing of air and fuel can be obtained. At, as I said, whether it is a petrol engine or diesel engine, better mixing of air and fuel can be obtained. Better scavenging of gas gases is possible. See, because once when there is a perfect expansion is taking place, more and more power is developed. Whatever the exhaust, whatever the burned gases are available in the engine cylinder, they are exhausted to the atmosphere during this exhaust process. Okay, torque is improved for lower speed range and better torque at lower speeds. Okay, generally we notice in normal engines as the pressure uh, keep on varying the torque also keep on varying but during this supercharging we can find improved torque with uh, less adverse effect at all the speed ranges of the engine and particularly the torque is low the torque at low speeds it is better okay but if we look into another one, we are going to discuss at later stages. In turbocharging, that is, uh, the torque will be better at low speeds as well as high speeds. But here, better torque we can expect during supercharging at lower speeds. Faster acceleration of the engine is possible. To see the difference between supercharged engines and the normal engines for the same capacity for supercharged engines faster acceleration of the engine is possible compared to non supercharged engines the specific fuel consumption is lowered slightly the specific fuel consumption is lowered slightly a better mechanical efficiency and efficient combustion is possible with supercharged engines with supercharged engines better mechanical efficiency can be achieved and efficient combustion is possible efficient combustion how it is possible because better mixing of air and fuel is taking place once when there is better mixture the combustion will take place at minimum time and the complete combustion is possible with minimum time once when the complete combustion is possible with minimum time efficient combustion is possible in CI engines, what do you mean by CI engines? In compression ignition engine, that is in diesel engines, exhaust smoke is reduced with supercharged engines. And now let us see what are the disadvantages of, see, we have seen only one coin of the uh, uh, supercharges, supercharged engines. Its supercharged engines will have disadvantage also. So I was telling the maximum pressure at the end of compression increases once when the maximum pressure increases the temperature also increases once when the temperature increases pre-ignition possibilities are bright if there is a pre-ignition in the engine it leads to detonation or it leads to engine knock so detonation tendency increases in SI engines for supercharged engines to prevent this i told we have to use the fuel with better anti-knock characteristics. Heat losses due to turbulence and thermal stresses are more. Thermal stresses definitely it will be more because more temperatures are achieved, okay? The wall overlap period increases up to 60 degrees of crank angle. What happens? What happens if the wall over overlap period increases? As the wall over all overlap period keep on increases okay there is always possibility of escaping the fresh charge to the open adjust wall so always the objective of an engineer as far as the automotive engines are concerned okay overlap period must be it should be in between 30 to 40 degree but due to this supercharging overlapping period slightly increases even though this increases uh, it can be overweight because the power output can be increased better lubrication is required better cooling of piston walls is required why better cooling of piston walls are required because pressures increased are more 
temperatures are more in the cylinder and the surrounding piston and surrounding walls the heat is more because of this again this will lead to pre ignition so to avoid this better cooling as per the piston is concerned better cooling as per the wall is concerned it is required as per the super charged engines are concerned supercharged engines increases the cost it definitely initial cost of the supercharged engine increases for the same capacity otherwise the normal engine because here we are going to use the additional component called supercharger supercharger is nothing but uh, the compressor the compressor cost tends to be increased okay once when the, this is the case even though the increase in cost all these parameters can be overweight ultimately the supercharger increases the power output of the engine in turn increases the what is this the efficiency of the engine what are the methods of supercharging there are three methods of supercharging okay in the first arrangement generally we speak it is supercharging i will show with figure itself you can see this is the first method this method is called supercharging here you can see the engine all of you are seeing you can see engine and piston is there crankshaft is there and inlet wall is there exhaust is there one intercooler component is there c it refers to be c it refers to be compressor and this is inlet wall this is exhaust wall okay see the engine crankshaft it is connected to the compressor okay the air is inducted into the compressor this, this is called point 1 okay the compressed air from the compressor okay it is taken from the point 2 the compressor what is going to happen compressor receives air at atmospheric pressure it compresses to higher pressure the higher pressure air it is coming out of the compressor and it is passed through the cooler okay this cooler it may be air to air cooler or water to air cooler okay so what what the cooler see the compressed air the pressure will be more temperature will be more okay the objective is to cool the air at the constant pressure we want to reach a highest pressure we want to cool the engine we want to minimize the temperature of the engine it is passed through the intercooler and yeah. high pressure air high pressure air and cool high pressure air coming out from the intercooler then it is taken to the inlet valve okay then the engine performs and power is developed some percentage of the power developed by the engine cylinder it is used to drive the compressor so this is the pulley and here the gear arrangement is there gear arrangement is required to operate the uh, compressor according to the requirement of engine load according to the requirement of engine speed this method is called the supercharging of engine cylinder this is called the supercharger supercharging of engine cylinder okay uh, you, if you want you can draw i am going to circulate this slides to you through the mail okay again i will repeat in this first method the compressor is driven by the engine cylinder some portion of the power developed by the engine it is used to drive the compressor compressor receives air okay at atmospheric pressure it compresses by the power of the engine and its pressure increases temperature of air increases the high pressure high temperature air which is coming out from the compressor it is passed through the cooler whereby the cooling will take place where the pressure remains constant the high pressure cooled air then it is inducted into the engine cylinder for the engine operation and for in increasing the power this is the first method of supercharge okay right 
and in the second method turbine is coupled to the compressor it is driven by engine exhaust the turbine used in this arrangement is free from engine except that of the exhaust pipe and air inlet pipe the power output of the engine is not used to run the compressor this method is called turbocharging in this method i will explain better with the figure this uh, complete arrangement is called turbo charge okay here in this turbo charging we are not using the power of the engine to drive the compressor okay here in this turbo charging the compressor is driven by the turbine okay then how the turbine will operate how the turbine will produce the power and the power which is produced by the turbine is used to drive the compressor see already we we have seen 30 percentage of the heat energy which is generated during compression it goes to the exhaust through the open exhaust wall. okay this 30 percentage of heat energy it goes as a waste this exhaust energy this the exhaust the burnt exhaust gases from the cylinder before it is exhausted to the atmosphere it is passed through a unit called turbine this turbine will use the exhaust heat energy to produce the power this power whatever the power then once when the exhaust is passed to the turbine then it is exhausted to the atmosphere okay so the whatever the power produced by the turbine t it is used it is coupled to the compressor okay this turbine will drive the compressor okay the air from the atmosphere it is taken to the compressor okay the compressor will compress the air it increases the temperature of air compressor increases the pressure of the air the high pressure high temperature air which is coming out from the compressor it is passed through the cooler before it is supplied to the in, uh, engine cylinder through the intake manifold okay what is the purpose of cooling the pressure is high pressure is maintained only the temperature of air is cooled the heat of air is, the air is cooled okay so this all this arrangement is cooling is made to prevent the pre ignition to prevent the ignition now okay this entire arrangement is called turbo charging okay in this uh, the difference between the previous method and this method in the previous method it is called supercharged engines in the previous method we have seen the compressor is driven from the directly from the engine itself but in this method there is a difference the compressor is driven from the turbine the compressor it is driven from the turbine okay and the how the turbine will develop power i was telling 30 percentage of the energy goes as a waste through the exhaust the exhaust energy before it is exhausted to the atmosphere it is passed through the turbine unit the exhaust energy the exhaust gases are utilized to develop the power by the turbine and this turbine whatever the power whatever the energy which is developed by the turbine it is used to drive the compressor in turn compressor will increase the pressure and temperature of air and this high pressure high temperature air is passed through the cooler in turn it is uh, supplied to the engine cylinder through the inlet manifold okay so this is how this setup is called this arrangement of supercharging is called turbocharging system or supercharged turbocharging system okay the difference between previous and this method again i am telling you in the previous method the compressor is driven from the engine itself directly whereas in this method compressor is driven from not from the engine directly it is driven from the turbine here no way relation between compressor and 
engine cylinder direct relation okay the exhaust energy he used to develop the power by the turbine the power developed by the turbine he used to run the compressor and this compressor will produce high pressure air and it increases the density of air and it is supplied to the engine cylinder by passing to the intercooler this is called second method this means complete arrangement it is called turbocharging system or supercharging turbocharger okay and this method generally it is recommended for heavy duty automotive engines and this is for heavy duty automotive engines and for marine applications also this turbocharging method is used previous method the supercharger it is used also for heavy duty generally the supercharger applications are restricted to car car and marine air applications okay these are the two one more technique is there this is the third method i will explain this third method of supercharging the turbine and compressor they are coupled from engine cylinder and turbine is also coupled to the exhaust manifold okay why this arrangement okay there is a turbo lag in the previous arrangement whatever we have seen what we have seen uh, that is the supercharged turbocharging system where exhaust is directly exhaust manifold is directly connected to the turbine okay so uh, during starting the turbine will produce less okay to compensate that some amount of power which is developed by the engine cylinder it is also used to drive the turbine okay once when the engine warms up by then whatever the exhaust it is selling manifold it is linked that energy is sufficient to drive the compressor in turn it is used to drive the compressor okay third method this method this method the exhaust is linked to turbine and all the turbine compressor are also linked to the turbine is also linked to the engine crankshaft okay so this arrangement is to minimize the turbo lag turbo lag in the sense during the initial duration once when the engine starts the temperature of the exhaust will not be much that exhaust energy may not be sufficient enough to uh, develop the power by the turbine that will be compensated by the some amount of energy from the engine is used to drive the turbine so that uh, not drive the turbine so is used to uh, develop some power so that it once when the engine warms up the exhaust energy that is sufficient enough to develop power by the turbine and whatever the power used drive the turbine that is used to drive the compressor and again the high pressure air high temperature air it is supplied to the engine cylinder by passing through the cooler again i am telling the objective of cooler is the pressure is maintained constant only the air is cooled the heat of air is absorbed the heat of air is minimized the temperature of air is reduced where a pressure remains constant this is the third method of supercharging and this method is used particularly in aircraft engines in aircraft engines and even in marine engines also in modern marine engines this type of this setup whatever the setup which is shown in the diagram okay this is used okay then another method you can see in this method this is the fourth method and here the arrangement is slightly different in this method we can see the compressor okay it is driven by the 
engine cylinder okay the power developed by the complete power you can see the complete power developed by the engine cylinder the engine crankshaft it is directly coupled to the compressor okay what whatever the power which is developed by the engine cylinder it is used to drive the compressor in turn the compressor will increase the pressure and temperature and it increases the density of air and this high density of air it is supplied to the engine cylinder through the inlet manifold by passing through the cooler okay now and the exhaust energy whatever the exhaust energy it is used to uh, the, that energy is used to develop power by the turbine and that is the power of the engine okay this is the fourth method and the power developed by the engine cylinder it is used to drive the compressor and the power of the engine here in this case it is obtained from the exhaust energy the exhaust the burnt exhaust gases are passed through the turbine before exhausted to the atmosphere the turbine will develop power and that is the power of the engine in this fourth method this fourth method is rarely used and where efficiency is the foremost and priority in this case this can be used and this is particularly used in aircraft engines and in missiles and in modern marine engines and heavy duty automotive engines these are now we have seen four methods of supercharging what is the first method of supercharging in the first method of supercharging you can see this is the first method of supercharging here one compressor unit is there that is called supercharger and in this method what is done is again i am repeating the some percentage of the power some percentage of the power developed by the engine cylinder it is used to drive the compressor compressor increases the density of air its pressure is increases temperature is increases the high density air it is passed through the intercooler and it is supplied to the engine cylinder that means cooled high pressure air is supplied to the engine cylinder through the inlet manifold okay then processes will be there and engine develops power this is the first method and this method is called supercharging and second method we can see this energy in this method okay in this method the compressor is not driven from the engine cylinder in the previous supercharging method we have seen all of you see the figure in the uh, this is the third method whereby uh, the, the turbo lag can be minimized the turbine is also coupled to the engine crankshaft and the exhaust is also coupled to the turbine okay this is the third method and third and fourth method and fourth method is entirely different from all the other three okay this this is called completely super turbo charging system okay in this fourth method it is totally different from other three system why you can ask see the whatever the power whatever the power which is developed by the engine the, the power developed by the engine it is used to drive the compressor it is used to drive the compressor and the energy developed by the engine cylinder is with the help of exhaust energy okay the difference between this other three methods and this method the total power developed by the engine cylinder or the crankshaft is used to drive the compressor compressor increases the density of air high density of air is inducted into the engine cylinder okay and in this cylinder in this arrangement the power is not developed by the crankshaft the power is developed by the turbine and this turbine will develop the power with the help of exhaust energy the burnt exhaust gases which are supposed to be exhausted to the atmosphere these are exhausted to the atmosphere 
by passing through the turbine in turn the turbine will use the exhaust energy for developing the power this is the another method of this okay now there are what are, how many types of again i will take uh, just uh, one or two this thing uh, topics in this there are two types of superchargers superchargers are nothing but i said the compressors okay compressors are the systems which are used to increase the pressure of air increase the temperature of air it increases the density of the air okay that is the super superchargers are the compressors compressors are uh, driven from either turbine or the crankshaft okay the these compressors are mechanical driven these compressors are fully driven okay i was telling in one of the earlier this thing what i was telling if we need less pressure for operating the engine so what we have to do we have to increase the length of the pulley if we increase more pressure we have to decrease the length of the pulley okay now we should see what are the types of superchargers there are two main types of superchargers one is positive displacement superchargers and another one is dynamic compressors okay the positive displacement superchargers deliver a fairly constant level of pressure increase at all engine speeds whereas the dynamic compressors deliver increasing pressure with increasing engine speed the see we have two different types of superchargers only two types of superchargers one is positive displacement supercharger another one is dynamic compressors okay the positive displacement compressors deliver a fairly constant level of pressure in piece it is with this even the limitations are also we can find here itself it gives only constant level of pressure increase to the engine cylinder at all the engine load at all the engine speeds okay okay then the dynamic compressors as the name itself indicate dynamic it is dynamic according to the requirement of uh, uh, engine load according to the load on the engine according to the speed on the engine the pressure the pressure increase or it increases the pressure it, it decreases the pressure the pressure requirement will be met according to the load on the engine according to the speed on the engine with the help of dynamic compressors positive displacement compressors will supply a constant pressure increase at all the engine speeds there is no variation in this thing even we can take this may be a, a limitation of this uh, uh, type of compressor also whereas the dynamic compressors the advantage of dynamic dynamic compressors it supplies the high pressure air it supplies the pressure of air according to the load on the engine according to the speed mm -hmm. on the dynamic compressors rely on accelerating air to high speed dynamic compressors rely on accelerating air to high speed and then exchanging that see dynamic compressors definitely will have its own advantage and disadvantage the main advantage is that the pressure of air uh, supplied according to the requirement of engine what is the requirement of engine the load which is acting on the engine this is one requirement of engine another requirement of engine is the speed of the engine the speed of the engine according to load on the engine according to the speed of engine dynamic compressors will supply the pressure of air according to the requirement to meet these two requirements what are the two requirements load on the engine speed on the engine okay so this is the centrifugal supercharger okay this is a, this is one type of compressor so see here you can see the smaller circle you can see this is called rotor the vanes are there impeller it is called uh, 
and uh, this is diffuser air air is inducted from the atmosphere at atmosphere pressure and it is trapped between these impellers and once when it is impellers start rotating the trapping will become more and more it rushes it drops and uh, the high pressure is slightly increased pressure it is passed through the diffuser then it is passed through the involute you see again in involute also involute casing also the gradually reduced air is there through this gradually reduced air uh, reduced passage the air is passed as the passage of uh, uh, any system decreases the fluid pressure increases and the compressed air it is coming out from this thing uh, this uh, this is very good type of supercharger with, with this uh, as far as the centrifugal supercharger are concerned the cost is very low the cost this is low cost and to drive this compressor uh, less power is required for centrifugal supercharger the cost of this uh, centrifugal supercharger is low and less power is required to drive this compressor and the conversion efficiency what do you mean by con conversion efficiency conversion efficiency means it increases the density of air the density of air will be more then so once when the density will be more the mass of air inducted into the engine cylinder for the same swept volume okay for the same capacity uh, without supercharging the uh, this density and mass of air increases and this mass of air increases what is going to happen more amount of oxygen what is more amount of oxygen it uh, it leads to more amount of burning the fuel fuel efficiency increases combustion efficiency increases volumetric efficiency increases whereby the combustion uh, heat energy generated will be more better expansion more power will be developed this is the plus point of this centrifugal supercharger it requires less maintenance and handles any quantity of air okay the maintenance of this super this thing is uh, uh, centrifugal uh, compressors are less and it handles any quantity of air more number of uh, quantity of air can be it requires more space due to larger impeller this is an disadvantage as far as this thing is concerned it requires more space due to larger imp see impeller is the main important where in between the two impeller vanes the air is uh, trap the trap they will as the impeller as the rotor start rotating the trapping will be more the pressure of the air passing through them will be increases